We're back. We are back. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Verizon F1 podcast. I'm your co-host, Liam. And Andrew. In case you guys forgot, um, we do still exist on this planet. Yeah. Um, we had Mother's Day, and uh, Andrew and I's uh, work shift didn't line up, so couldn't get to you guys on the Miami Grand Prix. We're sorry about that, but... Didn't miss much. No, it wasn't really a lot. No. I, I, I had a lot of expectations for that track because... One, it's like the, that was the second U.S. track coming in the in the sport in like what last decade at least. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like they had a Miami Grand Prix before though. It was yeah, they did, but it was a long time ago. They, well, it was like in the seventies. They raced in like Michigan that. before. Yeah, they they're talking about bringing it back to Detroit. That'd be sweet. That'd be cool. Like be awesome. the the same track as what they host the Indy cars. Like at, yes, at, I think so. Or actually, it might be a city a city one like through Detroit City. Oh, That's what it was last year. Or not now. last year, last time. Yeah, like a long nice. time ago in the eighties. But yeah, anyway. Didn't really miss much. Um, I thought the track was didn't flow very well. A lot of the drivers were complaining, obviously, about kind of just the difficulty going through that chicane, that really, really slow, yeah. slow chicane, and that sweeping left hander towards the end. I think uh, so it was a high speed track, and they just had to throw that chicane in there, and it just kind of ruined it. I wasn't a big fan of it. Yeah, I saw a lot of people on Twitter, especially saying how this is kind of like Monaco 2.0, where yeah. Miami was trying to emulate Monaco a little bit. Yeah. And as we know, Monaco is not really known for passing. It's a huge qualifying track. Yeah. That being said, they were really promoting this track, though, throughout the U.S. They were. I know there's a lot of you know people on Twitter, again, saying how, like a lot of the British fans, mm -hmm. saying how, like, why do you need this track? Like, yeah. why do you need another Formula One track yeah. in, in North America? They're it's not happy. getting too much. Yeah, they weren't happy, they weren't, about, they weren't it, happy about it. it was, yeah, it was, it was Miami. It was gimmicky. It was, it yeah. was It was the U.S. It like, was that whole, like... Uh, kind of like magnum pi thing yeah like it was kind of funny. miami vibe it was funny yeah like the colors it was right around the dolphin stadium which i thought was kind of cool they put a track right around the uh, yeah what, what stadium what's it called the hard rock the hard rock stadium yeah. which is sweet yeah yeah like for us like we we're acclimatized to it like we know what americans are like we do clearly we do just yeah. from where we live yeah and how much we're associated with americans like day in day out basically mm -hmm. uh whether it be media or people just that we know yeah or interact with so I, it didn't bother me at all because that's just what we're no. used to. But yeah. to, again, to the average F1 fan who goes to historic tracks and looks at Monaco, <laughs> looks at, you know, um, yeah. Silverstone and looks at uh, like Imola and all these tracks. It's like, mm -hmm. the fuck is this? Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. It's, it's honestly like there's a reason that I think they don't have American drivers in Formula 1. They try. They don't want to Americanize the sport, which is OK. I understand that. And um Oh, Liverpool just scored. Sorry, we're watching Sadio the Liverpool. We're, we're, we're watching the Liverpool Wolves game. Let's um, go. And we also have the Manchester City and Aston Villa game on. So let's go. Sorry for a little sidetrack, guys. Um, but yeah, oh, wild. <laughs> Congrats. That was awesome. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Liverpool fans. I'm not a Liverpool fan. I'm a Chelsea fan. Yeah. But I don't want Man City to win the title. Yep. Liverpool has to win this match. They're tied one one right now with the Wolves. City has to lose or draw this match over here that I'm watching. Live time. So, yeah, I'm going to see some other live reaction, not just the race, but some uh, yeah. some footy action, too. Yeah. Um, Damn. Yeah, so I was saying about the uh, American fans and, and, or sorry. American drivers. American drivers and how they're not in. It's like they have IndyCar, right? Yeah. So I think a lot of the Formula One fans just look at it like, hey, man, stick to uh, IndyCar and um, we don't want you here. And then I also heard Aunt Mario Andretti is making a, trying to buy into an F1 team next oh. year. They're trying to start an, F an F1 team, actually. Which yeah, is cool I've, with his son. Yeah, I've heard a lot of so different sweet. things. I've heard There's like Porsche, a lot, yeah. Porsche is trying to come back into it next year too, Audi, I think. Audi. Audi. I don't think that's until 2026, I believe. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's going to be for a while. Yeah. I'm not sure if they're going to buy in or if they're going to take a team over. Don't know. I have no clue. Mm -hmm. I haven't really done a lot of research on it. We've been uh, busy. It's starting to be summer now here in Windsor, so we're getting busy. We're having, uh, you know, sitting outside in the sun, having a Party couple, time. couple drinks. <laughs> nice. Not bad. Anyway, let's get to Spain. Espana Grand Prix uh, wrapping up today. You know, back in Europe, like you just touched on, they were in North America last or two weekends ago. Yep. Uh, make the flight back over to Europe for a pretty good stretch now, I think. I think they have Monaco next weekend. They do, yeah. That's so going to be, it'll be fun. It's back to back, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, have a lot of F1 content coming your way in uh, the next week or so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, right off from this match. Uh, from this match. Right off <laughs> this is a match. It was a match. on my mind. We're watching the match. Right off from this race. Um, kind of went the way we expected you know we had ferrari on pole again charles Leclerc his fourth pole this season mm -hmm. um again max verstappen right there with him unfortunate for max uh, yesterday in qualifying with yep. his drs failure he wasn't able to put in a hot lap in his last uh last attempt yep well 
we'll talk about that later on today, how yes. that affected his race today as well. But uh, for the most part, I thought it would be a redemption story for Carlos Sainz maybe today. Being in his home race, obviously, he's had a lot of bad luck coming into this race, you know, going off track in Australia, going off track in Saudi Arabia, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought he was going to have a turnaround race. Didn't go his way as well either at the start. Nope. Um, but yeah, how about we just get into it right away? Like, what do you think? What do you think your initial reaction of the race was today? So overall, I thought like at the race as a whole, I thought that, uh, it was a lot more drama and it was more, uh, action packed than I thought it was going to be because Spain traditionally isn't a track where you're, you're overtaking, right? Right. It's, uh, you may be on the main straight, but for the most part, it's high speed, tight corners. Really? There's a couple sweeping right handers like that turn three, I believe that long sweeping right yeah. hand, which you can't really. It's not really a flat out corner, I don't believe. Um, if you were watching like the onboard cam, it sounded like the drivers were kind of lifting a little bit and just yeah. kind of governing the engines to go through. They don't want to snap their rear end off, right? Like we saw with Signs and Verstappen today earlier. Yeah, turn four. They're exactly. all, they're almost dropping below a hundred kilometers an hour on that turn. They were. Which yeah. You don't see very often. No, and also I believe tire tire degradation had something to do with it too. They hot. want to conserve their tires, right? It's really hot on the track. Yeah. Super hot. Uh, Mercedes was having cooling engine uh, issues. They. Uh, their water pump, I guess, wasn't working towards uh, for their engine towards the end of the race. Yep. So we'll kind of get into the reliability of the cars going going further into the podcast. But um, yeah, overall, I thought it was a great race, action packed. Um, you know, there was a lot more. Uh, sorry, there's a lot more guys out, <laughs> um, out like just out of one DNF for Leclerc, which you know, kind of his first DNF of the season. Yeah. Sucks now. Verstappen is. He's right there. He's up there. I think he's ten points ahead of, of Leclerc or something like that. I yeah. don't. I don't remember. We'll, I just we'll looked at it, it briefly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like signs. Same thing. Spun out. Verstappen spun out. Both kind of not due to any other cars. Uh, mm-hmm. Right on. Right on lap one. Hamilton and Magnussen come together. Um, definite. Definite racing incident. Yeah. I don't think that they needed to investigate anything. Yeah, the stewards that. just said that's hard racing. It's lap one. It was. Yeah. If there's any. Exactly. If there's going to be any bumping and grinding, mm-hmm. it's going to be on lap one. Most yeah. Of the time. I think. Um, who was it? Was it Russell and uh, Perez that came together yep. too at the at and the then beginning? Signs actually almost got re- uh, almost got in the back of Perez, I think, too. Really? Because of that little shuffle going on. Yeah. Um, I don't think that affected him on why he spun out. No. Uh, I no, it was lap I don't think four, so. Either. I believe it was. Uh, well, when, lap seven. Lap seven. Yeah. Yeah. When he spun out, I think it was. Um, it was just a tailwind that they had. I was. Uh, I heard Max uh, GL on. Um, his race. Saying those windy. He going was that saying turn. that just the tailwind going into that turn, and you just lose your end. And if you think about it, the cars are going so fast. Imagine like we're on the expressway, and we're going 120 kilometers an hour. You can feel the wind. Mm-hmm. If it's a windy day, you can feel the wind going through your car. These guys are going 200 miles an hour. Yeah. Like I'm sure <laughs> that the wind plays a factor. Imagine sticking your hand out the window. Oh, oh, I did that in a plane once. A plane? Yeah. Wow. Oh, so, okay. You're flying in like. Uh, yeah, it wasn't like a. It wasn't a like fucking a jumbo. Seven forty seven. No. <laughs> Like you broke uh, Kel- the window? No, a couple a couple years ago, a couple years ago for, for my birthday, Kelly's dad, um, he's done like flying lessons in the past. Yeah, yeah. So he brought me up one time for my birthday. Okay. It was him and like some kid that was like 13 years old. It's kind of scary. <laughs> he was like the pilot. Like the kid was? Yeah, he's like the instructor. I'm like, are you even qualified? <laughs> and then the mom's, like, his mom was there as like the other instructor, and she's like, oh yeah, he's got like 2,000 hours of flying. I'm like, he's not even got 2,000 hours on this earth yet. <laughs> like, this kid's like scared the shit out of me. So there's 60 year old Tim, and then me. Yeah. Oh and uh, this kid takes us up flying, and I was in the back seat of this like, little Cessna, this little tiny ass <laughs> plane. Like, I was like, okay, I'm going to go down. Like, I had Kel filming from the ground. Totally I'm, like, Kel, I'm like, film this takeoff as like the last time you ever see me. So <laughs> I have footage of zero me. confidence in this kid. Oh, yeah. I, I think Kel's maybe like 40, 50 feet away on the sideline there uh, along the runway. And yeah, she, yeah. yeah, I got a picture of me, and my face is like, <laughs> yeah, and the window would be an idiot. And, uh, oh, but no, once you got awesome. up there, though, you can like peel back the window, and I had my arm out the window, like up in the sky. You're going, like, you're going pretty We weren't going too fast. But, yeah, like, I mean, we were, you're, going, you're going decent speed. I don't know how fast those fucking things are. Yeah, I don't even know either. We were clicking. I couldn't see anything. Like, I couldn't see any of the dashboard. I was literally in like Help me. the luggage department. If there was like a carry on or something, I was like wedged in the back. It's only seats like three people. Yeah. Uh, it's tiny last little plane, cool. but I survived. That's awesome. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. That's great. It's good to see you. Yeah. You look good, too. Thank you. You've been losing some, uh, losing some weight? I have a little bit. You've been working yeah. out a little bit? Thank you for noticing. Yeah. Good. yeah, you look good. I like it. Yeah. Um, it's in the face. But yeah, getting back to the speed thing, I think, uh, yeah, obviously the drivers are facing way more uh, different conditions than we are in our everyday uh, SUVs. Yep. So, yeah, that probably led to something with the tailwind, and you don't really realize it's very fractional margins in Formula One that cause oh, yeah. disasters, right? So. 
Um, yeah, you know, Verstappen spun out on turn four. Um, kind of stuck behind George Russell after that for a long time. Mm-hmm. Had some DRS flap issues, like we were saying earlier. Um, Red Bulls just got to get that reliability down, man. Yeah. If they can get the reliability down, I think that, I mean, it's showing to them right now. Max is every race that he's finished this year, he's has won. Been, he's won. And every race since Hungary last year, he's been in the top two. That's okay. consistency. That's, okay. That's insane. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind they have the car week they do. in, week out. Like, yeah. No matter and, and what. And Checo, like it's another Red Bull 1 2. Yeah. No matter what um, like track you throw at them, whether it is like, you know, a power track or it is a, you know, a tight chassis track, kind of like this, yeah, this one street, was. Even or, the city circuits. Yeah. Too. Like we'll see a Monaco next, year, next week, of, of course, as well. Andy Robertson, nice shot. Yeah. Andy. Um, yeah, they they're they're stellar. I mean, they they've done a very good job. It has come down to reliability, like we said. Even mm-hmm. getting back to the first race of the year, Bahrain and Bahrain, you know, with, with Gasly going out and then both vehicles for Red Bull bowing out as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one here, yeah, the DRS uh, mechanical failure that they had in qualifying, like I said, really set back Max coming to this race because there's a stat out there saying that 73 percent of winners of the Spanish Grand Prix have been from pole wow. in the last 52 races. I think they had there. Wow. So, I mean, almost three quarters of the races that have been won have been by pole sitters. So for Max not to be able to put a flying lap out there because of the DRS issue, mm-hmm. that might be him playing in the back of his mind. They're coming in this race. Uh, I think before on his pre-race interview, he said he was asked a question like, what do you think with the car? He says, yeah, we got the DRS fixed. That's what the engineers told me. Yep. Obviously, he hasn't, wasn't able to test it during the um, the outlap or, or anything. Or anything, right? Because you can't touch the car for a certain amount. Of, or you can't make those types of fixes. Nothing yeah. that doesn't relate to safety, you can't yeah. fix in park for a Yeah, so like once the qualifying is done and like whatever the time limit is, boom, you're done for any adjustments. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't check the DRS anymore. He was told it was fixed. And then by, yeah, lap 13, basically when he was stuck behind George Russell from mm-hmm. the next 20 laps or so, 10 yeah. laps, whatever it was. Um, his GRS was failed again. Yeah, he was. Did you hear him on he the was radio? Was a, it was actually kind of funny hearing him on the radio because he's like, "Yep, Max, just press the button after the curb, and then you see it like open, close, open, close yeah. the thing." He's like, "It's because I'm pressing it fifty fucking times, man." <laughs> he just spamming. It's like you know when you play NHL and you're, you're oh, fighting yeah. with the with the controller. Oh like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's so it's funny. understandable too because like I said, like his car is so clearly frustrated. faster than Mercedes. He's so frustrated. The Mercedes car this this weekend too getting major upgrades and its own. And it's for its own team, and Lewis was really pumped up. Yeah. Um, with the upgrades coming, I mean, George Russell has been just a stud so far. Oh my god! At Mercedes, no, caps he, off to him. He was the driver of the day for me. Yeah, he I hasn't agree. got. Did the, he win driver of the day? I didn't even see. I it. didn't see it. I watched either. the rest of the race driving here. Just so we can <laughs> specifically, it's May two four weekend actually in Canada. They don't have this in the states or anything, but it's Victoria, a long yeah. weekend for us. So, uh, yeah, we're just trying to get done and then party we'll time again. We'll have some more drinks. Yeah, yeah. It's a good time. Got a day off tomorrow. Yeah, day off tomorrow. Not too bad. It's gonna be um, a good time. But yeah, I didn't even see who won Jar of the Day, but I completely think that George Russell is deserving of that. Um, he, uh, the way that he's been putting that Mercedes in, like he's been top four, top five, top six consistently, right? On the podium for the second time this year. Um, Lewis car, Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton? Driver of the Day. Driver of the Day. Actually, deserving for that too. He was, he went down to P19. He was, he was down. down at the bottom. He, all was, right? not, he was 19 and then Magnussen oh. actually... I'm oh, sorry, no, Lewis pitted before yeah. Magnuson did, so he was P20 yeah. at and, one point in this race. Yeah, and he uh, he was even saying on the radio, remember, he's like, is it even worth like going through in a power unit? I didn't like that. I didn't either, because it's just like, dude, it, it shows that you're just already, you're just deflated. You're just, ugh. Even, uh, you're, it's kind of like you're being a baby. It's like, now yeah. you have adversity, why don't you face it? Even Martin Brundle said that, too, during the broadcast. Yeah. He's like, I don't like that from Lewis. No, like you. You don't say that. It was like when George, uh, this is the difference. Remember when George was, um, they were talking about uh, George telling him to like, hey, where was this at? I think it was, uh, was this in? This year? Yeah, that was this year. I can't remember. But I think it might have been Australia. When he's like, hey, George, he's like, they're like, don't, uh, don't fight him too much. He's like, if they need to pass us and if it's going to wreck your tires, then oh, just yes. let him through. I think yeah. it was Australia. And he goes, that's not what I want here, man. Yeah. Which is like. That's awesome. Because you're a race car driver. Exactly. You're a race driver. And you want to just drive the wheels off the car every time you go in. Lewis Hamilton saying, oh, do we even bother wasting a power unit on this? And that was what? Lap six? Yeah, it was. And then look, he finishes P6. Five. Five. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, um, Valtteri didn't pass him at the end. No, I thought Valtteri was going to pass close. him. Uh, 
like yeah. only five seconds off. After. Yeah, but he had his drop because that, like I said, that cooling issue. But yeah. dude, you made it from that. And then remember even last year with Brazil? Remember when he went came to the back mm-hmm. in the sprint race and then mm-hmm. he, he came from the back again during the race? Different vehicle type, different, different circumstances. Exactly, but at the same time, like you're powering through it, which is awesome. I thought that this race by him was really good. He The strategy he was on at the beginning, I would assume that it was something like George Russell's probably with that was a three stop. Well, Lewis was the only driver that started on medium tires of the field. Really? Everyone started on softs. Lewis was the only driver on medium starting in P6. Those didn't last long. No. It took him off and put softs on right away. Yeah. Hard. I think, I think they were used softs too. When they, when probably. They it could have been. Uh, yeah. I've definitely seen that before where they do retire the car, but that's with maybe four laps left in a race. Yeah, exactly. Like you're, you know, I've seen it a lot of times with Vettel actually. Um, he's had some damage before. I've seen the Alonso a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. or even last year. Sorry, um, remember where, Perez actually last year? Yep, check with you. Um, it's just yeah, there. you yeah, you drop that early in the race. Yes, it's, it's kind of defeating. It's it's sad, but yep. you have so much race to go. And exactly, there's I 66 mean, laps. You yeah, have 60 more. One safety so car can, can change the whole thing. One virtual mm-hmm. safety car can change the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Multiple pit stops. Nobody knew exactly what the best tire strategy was. Nobody knew how many pit stops they're going to make this. this Red Bull has three. Three pit stops. Uh, at least Verstappen three, yeah. had three for sure. I think. I, I think the last one active was just to cover. Oh no! I think Sergio. Sergio's last Sergio one was to cover the lap. fastest lap. So he did Smart. three stops. Smart. But from Lewis's standpoint, everyone ahead of him just they dropped because they were making pit stops. Yeah. And that Mercedes vehicle, yeah, it was fast. It was quick. It was. It clearly showed that because uh, Aston Villa scored. scored. Aston, Aston Villa scored. scored. Oh wow, that's awesome. Suck it, Man City. Liverpool's got to win this game. If Liverpool wins and it finishes like this, Liverpool, mm-hmm. Liverpool are the champions. Oh, really? And if Liverpool wins and City ties, like scores a goal to tie, Liverpool still wins. Really? So City's got to score two goals. Okay, let's go City. Oh, nice goal. Was it sweet? I bet all the people in Europe are watching this. Nice week. header. Boom. Beautiful. Great setup. Let's go. Let's go, Reds. Um, But yeah. Coming down to it, you saw how fast that Mercedes was with the upgrades. Yep. Uh, George Russell just pretty, for the most part, he was uh, keeping up with the Red Bulls. Mm-hmm. And he was fending them off. And like we are saying, it's such a hard track to overtake. Uh, clearly, it showed. And um, yeah, hats off to George Russell. Hats off to uh, Mercedes and uh, Hamilton for the drive of the day. Because yeah, pretty really, really good day. Really good result for Mercedes. And they're going in the right direction, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so for the first 25 laps or so, it seemed pretty much straightforward, this race. Yeah, yep. Max having his spin out. Yeah, and then the DRS not working. There's actually a lot that happened in that. It was. There was a lot going on, but going. the big one, I mean, the big highlight of this of this weekend, of this race, I think, mm-hmm. was the fact that Charles Leclerc, lap 27, Ferrari's first power failure of the year. Yeah. And that, I think that's only a two-race-old power unit. Oh, they put a new one in yeah, for the last did. couple races? Yeah, yeah, it's only two races old or something like that. So okay. I don't know if they did it in Miami. I think it was in Miami. They had a new power unit. Okay. But they didn't They didn't really bring any upgrades this weekend, Ferrari. Neither did Red Bull. Uh, the biggest one, obviously, we saw was um, was Mercedes. And uh, who else was it? I think Alpine and Aston Martin brought a green Red Bull. Oh, yeah. Which, you, want, you want to touch on that? <laughs> I don't really want to touch on it. No, because it's the same thing that they did with Mercedes it at is. Racing Point. It's flattering. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're the if you're the outside fan, if you're the, the yeah. you know the head boss of any other team, it's like, what the yeah. fuck is this? I was, Why are you I was guys uh, watching your own stuff. I was watching the practice uh, one, and they Christian Horner had a green like the actual I saw green that. Red Bull out. The whole team in, did. In the yeah, I saw <laughs> the, whole, the whole team along like the paddock had. That's all funny. Green yeah. Red and then you had Lance Stroll talking about how it's not this isn't uh, this isn't the green Red Bull we found. Um, yeah, the guys at the the factory. He's got to get dork. some PR. He's such a some dork. PR oh my testing. God. He is a dork. He fucking what a chud. I don't know what. I can't see him having fun in his off time. I don't know what he would do. Him. I don't know what he would do. I feel like he's done everything because his dad just bought him oh, everything. Maybe, That's yeah. the thing, right? He's like, oh, well, I'm uh, going to go to Monaco this weekend and uh, I'm going to go on a boat. He probably then... lives there now. Yeah, exactly. So I, I feel like you would, your life like that would get boring. But imagine they like, just come in and just live like a regular life like we do. How like hard it would be for them. Well, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. Yeah, exactly. Like, the guys like, oh, like that I have do... to do my own dishes. Yeah, I think guys like that don't have their own free time. That's the thing, right? They're no. always busy doing something. Yeah, something for the team, more, which is cool. More of the top drivers than anybody else, I would think. Like, I don't think Latifi has that many commitments You think anyone on. wants a Lance Stroll autograph? No. Nah. Absolutely not. Or a Latifi autograph. If they want to send us some stuff, you can hang in the back here. Yeah, and that's cool. Yeah. We'll rock I mean, you guys sure. don't need approval from us, but it is whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so first power failure for Ferrari. Mm-hmm. Um, 
first this entire the, year it's looked like a solid unit yeah and um yeah it was the first year it's kind of weird leclerc was in no man's land he was like 10 seconds up on uh russell and just boom, yeah. power failure i was gonna say it was the first adversity that ferrari faces a team so far this year because yes. the other things, everything else has been carlos's fault yeah like leclerc has been lights out mm-hmm. except for his one uh what was his mistake at Oh, at um, Australia? No, it was uh, Emilia Romagno. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. Emilia Romagno Grand Prix. Mm. Um, the Imola. Sorry, Imola Grand Prix, yeah. Mm. He, uh, yeah, he tried to you know, get a little too aggressive. He made his spin out there. But other than yeah. that, he still finished, I think, P4 that race, P5 maybe? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, so it's still a decent result. Mm-hmm. But for everything else, it's been basically Carlos making unforced errors. It was, um, yeah. And even today, too, like with a little spin. Again today. And, you know. So for them, as the Ferrari team, this is their first, again, team adversity. Mm-hmm. Um, Carlos has had to overcome his own demons a little bit. He did make a good comeback today. He was down in P11 at one point. Yep. He finished the race in P4. He had a nice little sprint at the end there, passing mm-hmm. guys, uh, past Bottas, Hamilton, um, to jump into P4 to finish the race off. But mm-hmm. still, Ferrari, I think, going forward, they're they're going to figure it out. They're going to have they everything will. going the way that they want it to be going. Yep. Um, Red Bull, huge result for them, clearly. You know, yeah, having two having two guys finish one two, having one guy for Ferrari not even be there to finish in the points. Yeah, huge. Red Bull um, took the lead, the constructors and the um drivers today. Yeah, we'll Max took it over right over over uh Charles. But yeah, honestly it's kinda nice to see in the power uh or the sorry, the improvements that Mercedes is bringing to the table now because yep. I I said from the get go this season it would be great to see a three horse race up to the at the front like yeah. i want mercedes ferrari and red bull all battling i want them all pretty much the same level car that would be elite yeah that'd be so cool with the team standings right now it's 195 for red bull 169 for ferrari so there's the jump yet with Leclerc yeah. not finishing 120 for mercedes. For mercedes that's a big jump today i think they were at 91 going into the race this today i uh, believe yeah they could have been yeah i don't know i think it was 91 so they're only 40 points behind uh wow 40 points behind ferrari Wow, that's a blow. And then it's a for, blow for, for driver standings, 110 for Verstappen, 104 for Leclerc. So he's six up on And him. then Perez is sneaky 85. Oh, wow. It's like 25 points back. That's one. Wow. That's, that's I'll a, count out, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm that's, sorry. A, that's a Perez P1 next race and a max DNF. And they're both level at 110. Like that's, I mean, that's Never even not going to happen, maybe. No, Knock on wood. I, we don't know. Oh, hopefully not for you. We your, don't know. Your I, I am the Red Bull fan. Um, But yeah, I've. That's kind of crazy. I didn't realize how close it was. I, that's what I love, dude. Like, these are tight. Look, even George Russell, he's got 74 points. 30 off from Charles. Another yeah. DNF for Charles. And we have Monaco coming up. And we know that he makes mistakes at Monaco. He does. Back to Charles, uh, his home race. Oof. Hopefully, he can actually get the result this time, starting in pole last year, but not yeah. actually being able to he start. He is prone. He's prone to making mistakes. Yes, and, and It is what it is. That's I think, fine. I think I saw on Twitter, I think it might have been Matt Gallagher tweeted out. He's saying that Leclerc is poised to be a champion, an F1 champion. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so accurate with the with like with just with the demeanor of charles leclerc mm-hmm. and like his maturity that he brings yes he's still young at heart he's only what 24 years old maybe yeah i think he's my 25 age. something yeah so he's still youthful there but his maturity level and being at ferrari as long as he has been now i think they've like groomed him like i said like he was poised is what yeah. gallagher said he's given a lot of responsibility at a young age exactly and you, know? you look at past champions obviously hamilton verstappen verstappen came into his own he had to get over mm-hmm. the humps of being the the hot shot kind of young guy yeah. making and, mistakes all the time yeah him and Danny Rick had the had their yeah had their, they had their battles yeah. so I think again Leclerc he just he looks like an F one champion yeah like he looks like the poster top for like what F one champion could look like <laughs> he's a fucking good looking boy he's a good looking guy too yeah it and hurt. I think yeah I think he's gonna if not this year I mean what Ferrari brought to the table this year the new package and the new upgrades and all those things if this is something to look forward to for next season and seasons mm-hmm. to come I think Ferrari could be back to like the old glory days for sure i think so too and maybe it could be them in, in red bull one-on-one for the next couple of years mercedes yeah they're gonna make improvements we said a couple of podcasts ago like don't count on mercedes like no i, I we said that from the beginning yeah when it's they, only been three lewis or four hamilton races finished like or sorry it was in second race lewis hamilton finished like 10th we're like yeah. guys it's not gonna be there forever <laughs> his quote was like is there any points for that yeah that's what he said that was ruthless well, there's point for that yeah there's one point yeah <laughs> good job um so yeah i mean it's exciting and we have so much to look forward to still in this season mm-hmm. clearly well, this is only what race six five, yes I race six know. yeah so um i kind of want to touch on the checo and max yeah so ordeal kind of towards the end of the race yeah with the pit stops happening there was a lot of fluctuation between the couple of drivers at the top mm-hmm. um i think a couple of times there was actually well russell came p1 for a little while because uh the claire pitted 
Oh, so no, Leclerc was out in in his DNF yeah. in lap twenty seven. That promoted Russell to the uh, to the lead, um, and I think Max overtook him pretty soon after that. I think we have Russell pit, and then there's the pit stops. Yeah, yeah there's a lot pit. going on. There's a lot going there back was, and forth. It was really hard to keep track of how many people pitted. It was because there's pit stops that they were on. Yeah, what like you know what I mean? It was when they pit three times, two to three times. It's tough to follow the leaderboard because because you don't know like what some team's tire degradation is like mm-hmm. because they could pit lap. I don't know, 35 and make you, they can make it for the rest of the race. So on like, let's say a soft or a medium compound tire, we don't know. Yeah. But we end up seeing a lot of the guys pit maybe lap 30, then pit again 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We saw Max went, what he pitted, he was started on softs, pitted to mediums, pitted to softs, and then he pitted to mediums again. Three stopper. Bizarre. Yeah. Bizarre. So I was, so at some point Russell was leading the race and I was like, holy shit, like how long can this last for? That's what I was saying too. Yeah. And the DRS issues. And then we'll get to it now. Checo wanting to pass Max, like get him out of the way. Yeah. And um, because Checo's DRS worked one and two, he had the quicker. He car. did have the quicker car. He was he was definitely faster than Max at yeah in the race. And Max maybe he had a little bit of uh, discouragement after that spin because he didn't look like he was on form after that much. He was up driving up angry. until he was driving mad exactly. Yeah. So I think what happened was they're like, no, for now we're gonna leave you where you're at and um, just wait and see what happens for the next couple laps. And then Max pit. Yeah. Which put Checo into the lead yeah. of the race, I believe. Given the fresh mediums. Given the fresh mediums, yeah. And then uh, towards the end of the race, when I was driving over here, I was watching the race on my phone. Um, I uh, We don't condone texting and driving. No. Um, but uh, Watching F1 and driving, though. Yeah, exactly. Completely different priorities. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, just watching, you know, Checo, he was just kind of driving his heart out, having a, having a great race. And they were just like, okay... Uh, we're gonna have to let Max go by if he's faster. We'll, uh, but we're we're gonna look at look into it. And Checo was just like, "That's really unfair." But okay, yeah. That was or what the, was it? That was the lap forty nine. Yeah, yeah, he just said. Uh, right yeah, he he goes. Uh, if Max is quicker, let him through. Like dot dot dot. Like it was an open end, ended. Like you know. Mm-hmm. And then he goes, "That's very unfair." But okay, <laughs> I feel bad for him honestly because now we're kind of seeing a little bit of the. Are we seeing the Valtteri Lewis thing going on? Maybe was Max really that much faster? Uh, he was on soft on the tire compound. He was yeah, but then we saw Checo's had fastest lap of the of the race. He went on soft. He the went end, on yeah. the, when he went on his better tire, and then towards the end at at the very end of the race, he goes, "Yep, great result for the team." Oh but yeah, we he's need a team. To, but he we is need, a team player. But we need to talk later. Yeah, that's I- kind of <laughs> I don't know. And for especially for Red Bull right now, they're starting contract negotiations with him because Checo's done at the end of this yeah. at the end of this year for Red Bull. So, I mean, if they want to keep a teammate like him and. We both know how good he can, how good he can be in the team game. Then you got, you're gonna pay up. They should lock yeah, him yeah, up. They should 100%. because just looking Absolutely. at looking at the rest of the grid right now. Ooh, Valtteri Bottas to Red Bull. Oh, how many years has he had Alfa Romeo for? I think it's actually a couple of years, but still, okay. that'd be kind of sick. But I'm looking Did at the rest, imagine? looking at the rest of the grid. It's like I don't know who else would want to go there because Red Bull's brass, like Christian yeah. Horner, won't bring in a competitive driver no. to like rival Max. No, and I think Checo is like. I have raced for so long. I'm finally in a fucking great car. I can win races clearly. Yep. And I have this is the biggest chance I have to win a world championship. Right. Right. He but say he doesn't want to go anywhere. Good. Yeah. But the only thing is, is that he has to be given the tools to win the world championship. Yeah. A race like today. Like it yeah, just kind of shows. Like, yeah, you don't want your you don't want your drivers going P one, P two, and battling for the lead mm-hmm. because like obviously shit can happen. Like look what happened before, like you said with Max and Ricardo. Yeah. Or, you know, Hamilton, and Rosberg yeah. um, having their own disputes and everything. So you don't want them to do that. But you would think now the maturity level of Max, the maturity level of, of Checo, mm-hmm. if they were to battle a little bit, it would be respectful. It would, yes. be, it would be down the main street. It wouldn't yes. be some like sneaky, you know, turn four, turn 10 kind of scenario where you're trying to like sneak by. Like, <laughs> yeah, or like, risking, you know, they can talk in the fucking radio DNFs. together. Like they can say, hey, I'm coming by. Like, let me through. Yeah. <laughs> like it would be in a way that I think the team would still be okay with it. Mm-hmm. There was still almost like 16 laps left in the race. I think when the pass came through 15 laps or so. Okay. So let, let them race a little bit. Yes. Like, yes. If, if Max, I see what you're saying, if Max is quicker and that's just the case, then yeah, he's just going to pass you on merit. He's exactly. going to pass you. He's got, fa- got a faster car than you right now mm-hmm. to make the team play of saying, Hey, check move out of the way. That like for a driver, like we said with George Russell before, like hearing so the words, Hey, don't race this guy. Yeah. It's disheartening. Like you don't want to hear that from your team. No. Let the guys go. 
Let them race each other a little race. bit. Yeah. Despite strategy. Completely despite strategy. Yeah, and we're, look at like we know that Checo and him, Max were on a different strategy, clearly. Oh, big time. So just and that was just based off of what happened with Max. One with the DRS not being able to get by Russell, and, and two with spin the spin. Out. Yeah. So yeah, Red Bull did a real I think they did a really good job as a team today coming back and figuring out what the best strategy for the team was towards the end. Was it in Checo's favor? Maybe not. Mm. But I think overall the team like they kind of overcame one Max's problems with his reliability, his spin out, and they even just kind of overcame like, look, we got, uh, we got to think about what we're gonna end up one with the points. Like, what are we gonna be, uh, and the constructors right now? Like, let's just yeah put the heads down and let's figure it out. And that's why Jago is such a good teammate because he did understand that. He said since day one, he's there for the team. Yes, he'd love to win, yeah. but he's a team guy. I mean, we saw the ultimate teammate effort last year in uh, in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi so, yeah, yeah we, know he's, we know he's nails. And he's going to say the, the right shit all the time too. Like in front of a camera, he's not stupid. No, he's not. He's, he's been gonna, around a long time too, yeah. right? He's going to say, yep, it's all for the team, like whatever. Yeah, but behind closed doors, he'll have a private conversation with Christian, have a private conversation with his, Helmut Marko, maybe, whoever yeah, it is. Absolutely. And just to say, hey, like, we're Guys, racing out there. Yeah. Let me go. Exactly. Let me I go. wonder what was going on in that room. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see it after. Crazy. Um, Dude, this weekend for fantasy, you're not even going to believe what I had. I had the best lineup. I had Leclerc, Sainz, and uh, Perez. Mm. Magnuson, Bottas, Ferrari. DNF for Leclerc. <laughs> Sainz drops down to fifth. Or what was it? Fourth. Fourth. And then I had Bottas. Magnuson finish at the bottom. finish at the bottom. Yeah. And Magnuson at the bottom. 17, yeah. Dude, it was a ridiculous team. I was like, this is going to be my weekend. I know. I'm in 18th <laughs> out of 19. So we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Because I think I'm 15. <laughs> I don't I'm know. not doing so hot either right now. It's just bad. Fuck, man. I, I, I don't really budget, I don't think, well enough. But I really, <laughs> this weekend, I'm like, I'm budgeting because I'm going to win. But then, you, like, fuck you, Charles. Well, I know. Well, it's I had hard, it as my turbo driver, too. It's hard to go against Ferrari right now. That's okay. why it's such a smart move. And I still don't understand why they have Ferrari lower, like cheaper than Mercedes. Like they, mm. I just feel like it's almost like they haven't updated the um, like ranking system. I know this they, year they do. I mean, the, the drivers, they do. I think based on form it's like, yeah, drivers, but it's like minus one. Like they still have Lewis Hamilton up. Oh, really? Like, yeah, Lewis Hamilton's under max in cost. Oh, wow. He's like 30 million ma- or he's like 32 million and max is like 31 million or something. That's like, paying, why paying for the name? Exactly, but I mean, it's a no-brainer. It's like a pick, no-brainer Nike. picking up two Ferrari drivers, or at least one. Yeah, at least and one their for team, sure. and their team. Yeah, because you know they're gonna best bang for your buck for sure. Yeah, it's like it's not even worth having Verstappen or or Hamilton on your on picking them. They're worth thirty million. There goes like a third of your budget. Yeah, and if I mean, just shout out to the people out here. If you guys want to hear us do some F one fantasy talk, we can get we can put a video out too. We can definitely do a fit, like kind of like an update. Uh, yeah, who to look for? You know. Yeah, like hot just like trends. Of, like yeah, maybe we will get on the an- analytics part of it. Yeah, I think they might have some stuff like that, like actual. Oh, stats. they definitely do. They Even definitely like if do. not on the F one site, like the F one fantasy site, but maybe you can like dig deep. Something. Yeah. In F one F one data. F one data. It's definitely there. Yeah. Um. So just again, round off your top three: Verstappen, Perez, like we touched on, George Russell, another podium. I think a second of the year. Second of the year, baby. Um, he's been P four, I think, a few times as well. As well. Nails. So I mean, he's been. Yeah, lights out. He's been he's been really good. He's been living up to the, his expectation for the last four years. Um, I think we said before. I think it's the, the big thing is that this Mercedes car is clearly not what Lewis is used to. No, nope. but the failures of this car is what George Russell is kind of used to. Yeah. So he's finding how to drive the car. Lewis is want Lewis wants to drive the car he had last Lewis year. Lewis has driven perfection for how many years? Yeah. He wants to drive the car he had last year. George is driving the car now for what it is exactly, and what he's been. And I like used to. I like that. I love George Russell. That's racecraft. I'll give it to the guy. That's racecraft. It is racecraft. He's crafty. Yeah. We heard of witchcraft. Now we got racecraft. <laughs> Who's the witchcraft guy? Is that Bottas? I think he is. Did you, witch- see, did you see his uh, picture on Instagram? He's like swimming. He's got his butt just hanging out. And he's he? stro- swimming in a stream. Probably in Finland. Yeah. I guess that's what they do in <laughs> Finland. They walk was, around with their fucking hoses hanging out. He was biking the other... Uh, I think he was biking in Miami or something too. Like mountain biking or something. Maybe. Oh, I also want to give a shout out to uh, our grandma. Our yeah. grandma is in yeah. the uh, hospital. Um, we just want to say that we're thinking of you, Graham, mm-hmm. and, um, you're going to get through it. Get well. Yep. Get well. We love you. And you got, uh, you got everyone backing you on this. Yeah, for sure. If you guys want to put a shout out, Gma. Grandma. In the Has- hashtag grandma. Hashtag grams. Yeah. Anyway. Um, love you, Eileen. And then, yeah, just to say your top 10. So Carlos Sainz finishing P4 again, climbing from 11th at one point to P4. 
Bottas or Hamilton, sorry, P5 coming from the bottom of the table, finishing P5. Mm-hmm. Bottas sixth, Ocon seven, started 12th place for Ocon, so is that good result for him? Mm-hmm. Lando Norris starting 11th, um, climbed up the table a little bit to P8, didn't really have an exciting race. Nope. Fernando Alonso staying in that top 10 area for most of the race as well. Mm-hmm. And then Yuki Sonoda kind of surprised Ooh, for Alpha Tauri. Yuki. I tweeted out saying nice. that. I, th- I think I tweeted Stroll, Sonoda, Gasly, and Schumacher. I'm like, these guys' names have not been said once in the broadcast. Like, no one talked no. about them at all. No, that's true. And then end of the race, I was like, oh, Sonoda finished P10. It's like, where the hell did that come from? Uh, Yuki. And then he even had Vettel sneak up into 11th place. Yeah, he climbed the table. He you know, started, uh, where did he start? He started like, I think 16th. He Yeah, he was just out in qualifying 16th, Vettel. Yeah, so he got up to 11th place. So yeah, you Not know. Bad. The, obviously, we had high hopes for Aston Martin this year. I did. I did. I really wanted them to be a good, I wanted them to compete in the middle of the field, but yeah. what are they at in the table right now? Well, they're not very good. I think they they got to be down. Maybe they're below Williams. No, they're not. They're they have Nine. six six points collectively. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Haas yeah. has fifteen. Yeah, they didn't get in the points today. Yeah, I definitely I got Buck. this hat not for Vettel. Oh, sorry, not for Stroll, but definitely for Vettel. This is a Vettel hat. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, big fan of Vettel since yeah, the Ferrari the, days, save the polar bear days. Save the polar bears, Vettel. I wanted to touch on this last weekend, but we didn't have a podcast. Yeah, Miami. Vettel is. Just doing the right things, like, the right way. I think so. Like, so, okay, we'll get into this little rant right now, okay? okay. We had this conversation last week, or maybe a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. with the driver restrictions now, with the jewelry stuff. Oh, we don't even know if Lewis is going to race in Monaco. Okay. With the driver restrictions now, with the whole jewelry, you know, banning of certain things, and, you know, you can't wear your underwear. What was the underwear thing or something? There's an underwear ban that they did or something? What? I don't know. Vettel, oh yeah, didn't Vettel wear? He wore the underwear over top of his track. Yeah, his, uh, his suit. Yeah. Oh, Vettel, that's Vettel hilarious. Used, Vettel used Miami's platform for what it was. That is he hilarious. Was wearing, he was wearing um like a climate change shirt, saying how like Miami is gonna be the first city to flood if you don't like start doing climate change stuff. He wore that's that shirt crazy. in Miami for the Grand Prix. Yeah. He was wearing his underwear on top of his of on top of his track suit. He was that's so Vettel, funny. Or Hamilton was wearing. 18 pieces of jewelry and like yeah. eight, six watches on his wrist yeah during exactly. the press conference yeah which is like okay i understand i get it but at the same time man just take off your fucking earrings just do it i know and just do it i think like, it's people not were a saying, big deal people were saying if like you get into an accident and you have to go through an mri machine well, or fuck. something no it's or to get your you can't um, wear jewelry and yeah like my uh firefighters can't wear their wedding rings or any jewelry watches or nothing because the it gets so hot it can burn burns into your, okay. like, your skin right so understandable dude like they're they get a, there's a fire in the car we yeah. saw with roman grosjean yeah that does happen like it's just it's for their player safety or yeah. the driver's safety sorry i get that you it, know what i mean i know but they're just trying to I like get, even it's they're not trying to just say hey lewis uh you got to take all that shit off because we don't like it they're saying hey lewis you just take it off because if you ever get in a fire you're probably going to be wishing that you didn't have your necklace sculled into your chest i get that but they're just still i think they're still trying to just be themselves a little bit and like show some of their own personality in the car. Like, I what, get that too. Maybe what? just just don't wear it when you race. Just wear it in the press conference. Ah, I guess it's right? just it's tough because it's, it's something you that do you've done normally. It's something that drivers have done forever. That's the thing. Like you look back into years and years of racing. Everyone's yeah. wearing like a, a chain. You know they got a Jesus cross For sure. or and they all throw their watches on after right? whatever it is. They're all sponsored by fucking Rolex. Imagine. Yeah, so it's sick. They're just trying to I think promote themselves and their brand while driving because yeah. they can't really do it. Like the other, like whenever they're not in the car, they don't get tic- that many pictures taken of them. They're in the car ninety percent of the time. You see F one drivers. Very true. Actually, so like I never you, thought of that. You can't show yourself. Yeah. Right. You yeah. got your helmet. Unless, you, unless Instagram, I guess. Yeah, they, they do their own self promotion, but still, yeah, I don't I never, know. I never thought of that. The only time you see them is in the car. Huh. I mean, you might see like a couple of things here and there, but like yeah. most of the part, yeah. you know, they're qualifying or racing or whatever the hell it is. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, like I said, their their helmets are kind of like goalie masks for hockey. You can kind of put your own flair to it. Yes. Lando Norris is like huge for that. Wearing that this basketball, basketball cool. helmet that was for Miami. Funny. That was good. And then he goes, uh, yeah, we should give this to Mercedes because they like bouncing a little bit more or something like oh, that. Yeah. That well, was they, pretty funny. They showed his car like, going down the street with porpoising and his head was like this. It was like a ball. Lando? It was, yeah, it was, like a ball. <laughs> it was like a ball dribbling on the court. That's it was, hilarious. It was pretty funny. Um, yeah. But anyway. Uh, so yeah, next, Monaco week, next, next weekend, weekend, Monaco. Predictions? Early predictions? Um, I'm going to say that. I, I'm going to go with Leclerc. Yeah. Leclerc's going to win. I'm going to Verstappen P2. I'm going to say Perez P3. Okay. I'll say George P4, and I'll give... 
Who am I going to give five? Bottas, five. Ooh, Valtteri. Yeah, I'll give Valtteri fifth. So you're leaving Carlos Sainz out of your top five? No, I had him as my fourth, didn't I? No, you said... Oh, did I say George four? Oh, yeah. Ooh. I'll keep Carlos out of it. Yeah, I think oh. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. I like that. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm actually going to be pretty similar to you. I think, I think, yeah. Chucky, Charles is going to redeem himself. Chucky's going to go Me come P one. C rail. Yeah, just the boy. I think he'll probably, he'll probably finish P one. He's good. He knows Monaco. Knows the track. Born and raised there. Grew up there. Mm-hmm. Max and that Red Bull chassis. I think will do a really good job in Monaco. Coming off the win last year. Um, P three. Ooh, P3, I'm going to go, I'm going to Lewis. Oh, really? I'm going to go Lewis P3. Okay, all right. Because again, right. another guy who knows Monaco left and right. Back, yeah, he back didn't, with, he didn't have a good Monaco year last year. He didn't, but I just think Mercedes is coming around a little bit. Okay. They'll use this okay. race to like You're motiv- gonna go motivate over himself. You're going to go Lewis George? Yeah. Really? I, I like am. it. Okay. I am. And okay. then I'm, I'll go George 4 and then Carlos 5. Yeah. Also, I just oh, no, don't- sorry, then Checo 5. I'm, I'm putting Carlos out of my top 5 as well. Wow. Checo five, George four, Lewis three. Oh, I Max really, two. I really like that. Chucky one. I really like that. Yeah. I also want to say it, everyone, Mick Schumacher still hasn't finished top 10. That's why I haven't worn a race suit. No, it was close but today. It was close. Yeah. He I'm, was, he's get he's getting closer. So he was floating around that top 10. I'm going to have to find a race suit. He finished, uh, where is he? It was a what? 12th. Oh, this is driver's standing. It was 12th sorry. today. Yeah, no, he definitely was there. Like um, of course, now I can't find my spot. I don't want testing. Get out of here, F1. Ugh. You clicked by rain. I did. Or Spain. Not because, yeah, they did the... Uh... But I hit Spain testing. Oh. Not Spain. Uh, I got you. you dirty, race. You dirty dog. P14, actually. He dropped like a he motherfucker. Did, yeah. towards I, but the that end. also could be doing... That could also have to do with pit stops and strategy, right? Yeah, I know. He, he started in the top 10. He started 10th. Mm-hmm. He was up to 8th by the time Max and... Carlos had their spin outs. Yes. And then, yeah, he just... Doo, 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 doo. Yeah. And see, man, that all comes drop. down to strategy. It's crazy with the teams and they can figure out the gaps that they're going to have when they pit or how much longer they can last on this tire. Yeah. It's crazy. Anyway, well, we will see you guys next weekend in Monaco. Yep. We have the Monaco Grand Prix. We're going to just give you guys a race. Race, uh, I think, just to do a race podcast. Race analysis. Good too. Yeah. Well, guys, well, we're just... It's busy during the summertime. Yeah. Um, we can touch on quality. We, we'll touch on the quality because I think quality is better, Monaco. And yeah, you. I agree. Um, so yeah, we'll touch on the quality. We'll give you guys a nice race podcast on Sunday. Um, if you guys make sure you like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Yep. And follow us at Brazen F1 on Instagram and Twitter. Also, email us if you have any requests, comments, questions. Questions. I mean, we probably can't answer any analytics of Formula One. No. We can just give you opinions based off of what we do here. But our email is brazenf1 at gmail.com. And also merch, too. Merch. If we you do. Guys wanna, if you guys want these shirts. Merch, these shirts. Yeah. We, might get, we might get hats. Maybe do hats. Uh, Toques for the maybe. winter time, if you yeah. guys want. Yeah. Anyway, we got lots of cool stuff. Till then. Yep. Cheer. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>